Good morning, uh, colleagues. We will move now on to trochanteric fractures. Uh, X-rays was discovered by Rontgen in 1895. However, these upper end of fame proximal uh, fractures were adequately described before the advent of X-rays. In a famous book by Sir Ashley Cooper, he described and divided fractures of the proximal femur into uh, three groups. One is an intracapsular fracture, the other is a basic cervical, and the third is a trochanteric fracture. And comparing both, he realized that the trochanteric fracture heals well with exuberant colors and heals quickly in contrast to an intracapsular fracture. And hence, it has been known ever since and still is in the UK as an extracapsular fracture of the femoral leg, also known as pertrochanteric or intercanteric fractures. And the proximal femur is segment number 31. And hence, if you look at a proximal femur, the fractures are divided into A, which is a trochanteric fracture, a B is a neck fracture, and the C is a head fracture. A1 is a simple trochanteric fracture, A2 is multi-fragmentary, and A3 is an intertrochanteric. Now let's look further into that. The A1 is a simple fracture, either with a single isolated uh, fracture as a greater trochanter or lesser trochanter, commonly two-part fractures that might have a small a lesser trochanter fracture, but with a good thickness of the lateral wall. The A2 fractures are multifragmentary and have a lateral wall incompetence or deficiency. Uh, there are two groups, one with an, one intermediate fragment and the other with uh, two or more intermediate fragments. The A3, or known as the reverse obliquity, is an intertrochanteric fracture, meaning that it happens between the trochanters. Uh, it could be an oblique one, or a simple transverse, or a wedge, or a multifragmentary. Now, these fractures are famous uh, to happen in elderly patients, and they are known as fragility fractures, if there is also osteoporosis, and they are, usually have a suboptimal or bad outcome. There is a high readmission rate. There is an increased incidence of osteoporotic fractures in the elderly, increasing elderly population and a high refractured rate of the other hip or the spine. So about 15% are readmitted within 30 days. Many become dependent uh, following the fractures. 30% uh, die within the first year. There is a definite reduction of mobility in one fourth of the cases, and more than half would need a nursing home admission within one year. So the challenges in these patients are the medical comorbidities, physical impairment as poor vision, poor healing, weird muscles, poor balance, or mental problems, and at last but not least, the osteoporosis. So how are we going to manage these patients? On admission, the patients could 
have hypothermia, hypoglycemia, or dehydration that needs to be corrected. To optimize these patients to operate on within 24 to 48 hours, you need a multidisciplinary team approach. The geriatricians, the physicians, psychiatrists, physiotherapists, and occupational therapists. Uh, so now we come to the operative treatment. Principles are simple. Reduction, many cases can be achieved with closed reduction. Open reduction is uncommonly needed. The fixation options are either a DHS or a DHS with a trochanteric support plate or a proximal femoral nail, all in very few indications replacement. This is followed by rehabilitation that is not straightforward. So how are we going to fix it? A1 simple fractures can be adequately fixed with an EHS. However, one should achieve accurate reduction, avoiding varus and rotation. The leg screw should be central in the AP and the lateral and within 10 millimeters of the subcondral bone. If it's very osteopathic bone, we can deeply insert the leg screw up to five millimeters from the subcondral bone. Remember the tip apex distance is important and it shouldn't be more than shouldn't be more than 25 millimeters in the AP and the lateral added together. If it's more than that, there is a high risk of a screw penetration. Moving on to multifragmentary fractures, the A2 fractures. If it's got a thick lateral wall and the configuration is relatively stable, it can do with a DHS. If there is a lateral wall break during the operation or the lateral wall is thin, either 20.5 millimeters or less, then the options is to use an additional trochanteric support lead or proximal femoral nail. In A3 fractures, the intertrochanteric ones, you would need a proximal femoral nail or one of its variants like the gamma nail or the intertan or others. Replacement is uh, done in very limited cases. Patient should be a walker, osteoporotic. The fracture is multi-fragmentary with fixation is likely to fail. In these cases, we can think of a primary replacement. Now, what are the advantages of the DHS? It is cheap, readily available, has a short learning curve, and it allows controlled collapse. And this controlled collapse will compress the fracture, enhancing the stability and healing, and minimizing the possibility of a screw cut out of the or penetration. Now let's look at some complications. If the fracture is not reduced properly or the DHS is used for the wrong fracture configuration or for the wrong indication, it could fail. So it could break, the screws could break in the fracture displays, as you can see on the right side. The screw could cut out of the femoral head and neck. It could uh, cut out and penetrate into the, the acetabulum, or even it could bend. Nails are not without complications. The screw could penetrate into the hip, or one of them would penetrate into the head or the hip joints. This is known as the Z effect. Also nails could break. So in summary, you have to optimize the patient before surgery, operate within 24 to 48 hours, active reduction and fixation is mandatory. For A1 fractures, the DHS 
would do in A2 fractures, the stable ones, the DHS will do. If there is a lateral wall deficiency, they have to supplement the DHS with a trochanteric support plate or a proximal femoral nail. For A3 fractures, use a PFM. So if a DHS or a nail is worth doing, it's worth doing right. In Allah, we have to do it. Thank you very much.